Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, participated in the Arab Consultative Ministerial Meeting held in Jeddah, presided over by Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud in the presence of the foreign ministers of the GCC states, Jordan, Egypt and Iraq. The meeting discussed regional updates in line with the keenness of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in serving the issues of the Arab nation and preserving the interests of the Arab countries and their people. The meeting came in the framework of consultation and efforts to coordinate and unify stances towards issues of common interest. It discussed regional updates including the Palestinian issue and the Israeli attacks on Al-Aqsa Mosque, in addition to efforts aimed at reaching a political solution to the Syrian crisis. It stressed the importance of resolving the humanitarian crisis in Syria by the means that ensure its security, sovereignty and unity. The meeting also discussed combating all forms of terrorism as well as drug smuggling and trafficking. Concluding the meeting, a joint communique was issued stating that the foreign ministers affirmed the centrality and priority of the Palestinian cause and condemned the illegitimate Israeli practices that undermine the two-state solution and the chances of achieving a just and comprehensive peace. They denounced the Israeli attack on Al-Aqsa Mosque and underlined the importance of respecting the historical and legal situation of Jerusalem, stressing that Jerusalem Endowment Administration and Al-Aqsa Mosque under the custody of Jordan is the authority responsible for the mosque's affairs. The meeting exchanged views on efforts exerted to reach a political solution to the Syrian crisis that would end all repercussions and preserve Syria's unity, security, stability and Arab identity and return it to the Arab fold in a way that achieves the good of its people. The ministers agreed on the importance of ending the humanitarian crisis in Syria, enabling aid to reach all regions and facilitating the return of Syrian refugees and displaced persons to their areas, as well as taking the measures to enhance stability throughout the Syrian territories. The ministers stressed the importance of combating terrorism in all its forms and organizations, combating drug smuggling and trafficking, and preserving Syria's sovereignty to eliminate armed militia and end external interference in Syrian internal affairs. The ministers also affirmed that the political solution is the only solution to the Syrian crisis, stressing on the importance of having Arab efforts taking the lead in ending the crisis. The ministers also affirmed the importance of setting up the necessary mechanisms for this role and intensifying the consultation among Arab countries to ensure the success of these efforts. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, met in Jeddah with the Iraqi Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Fuad Hussein, on the sidelines of the consultative meeting of the foreign ministers of the GCC countries, Jordan, Egypt, and Iraq. The meeting discussed the fraternal ties binding Bahrain and Iraq and their steady growth in various fields. Both sides also discussed the regional situation and prospects of broadening the bilateral cooperation and coordination to maintain regional security and stability and support the peacekeeping efforts. Issues of common interest were also discussed. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Agriculture, Wa'el bin Nasser al-Mubarak, chaired the first meeting of the Cooperation Committee between the Capital Municipality Council, Municipal Councils and Government Service Agencies. The meeting comes based on the decision issued by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to establish and form a committee headed by the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture. The meeting discussed plans and priorities of the Capital Municipality Council and the Municipal Councils regarding services and projects which were discussed in line with the government's work program and benefiting from the support and involvement of the private sector in the implementation of some projects. The Minister stressed the role played by the Municipal Councils and the Capital Municipality Council in the construction and development process, pointing to the Ministry's keenness to enhance coordination and continuous communication with the Municipal Councils in a way that contributes to ensuring the progress of projects and services in accordance with the established plans. For their part, the heads of Municipal Councils appreciated the efforts made in implementing development projects, stressing the importance of this committee in achieving the required coordination to implement these projects. The Ministry of Works Undersecretary, Sheikh Mish'al bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, opened the one-way bridge to turn left onto Prince Saud Al Faisal Street towards Al Fatah suburb as part of the Al Fatah Street Development Project. The Undersecretary stated that the opening of the one-way bridge will contribute to easing the traffic pressure on the current traffic light located at the intersection of Al Fatah Street with Prince Saud Al Faisal Street and Sheikh 
Daej Street. Previously, the lanes for turning left from Prince Saud Al Faisal Street to Al Fatah Street at the same intersection were closed. Sheikh Mish'al Al Khalifa affirmed that the project, which has a total completion rate of 61%, is one of the important strategic projects that came in the implementation of the government's program. The Kingdom of Bahrain has expressed its deep concern and regret over the armed confrontation between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces and their serious repercussions on the security and safety of Sudanese citizens. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that the Kingdom of Bahrain further calls on the Sudanese parties to prioritize reason, stop armed clashes, exercise restraint to prevent bloodshed, and to resort to dialogue to reach political solutions that preserve Sudan's security and stability and protect the interests of the brotherly Sudanese people. The Kingdom affirms its position in support of Sudan and achieving the aspirations of its brotherly people for peace development and prosperity. Fierce clashes between Sudan's military and the country's paramilitary force erupted today in the capital Khartoum and elsewhere, raising fears of a wider conflict in the country. In Khartoum, the sound of heavy fighting and firing could be heard in a number of areas, including the city center and the neighborhood of Bahri. The Sudanese army said fighting broke out after the rapid support forces military militia tried to attack its forces in the southern part of the capital, accusing the group of trying to take control of strategic locations in the capital Khartoum, including the presidential palace. The military also declared the RSF a rebel force and described the paramilitary statement of provocation as lies. In a statement to the media, the chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, confirmed that the rapid support forces were the ones who started the battles this morning. Al-Burhan stressed that the armed forces are more than capable of defeating the rapid support forces. He also made it clear in statements to the media that the support forces sought to quickly take control of army headquarters and vital areas at dawn and even carry out assassinations. He stressed that there was no choice for the armed forces but to confront the ambitions of the rapid support forces in force, as he put it. In addition, he pointed out that the Sudanese army is managing operations against the rapid support forces patiently to prevent any casualties. He stressed the army has sufficient forces and will defeat the rapid support forces. Meanwhile, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia expressed its concern about the state of escalation between the army and the rapid support forces, calling for restraint. Egypt expressed its concern about the developments in the situation in Sudan following the clashes, and the Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs issued a statement calling on all Sudanese parties to exercise maximum restraint in order to protect the lives and capabilities of the brotherly Sudanese people and uphold the supreme interests of the homeland. The League of the Arab States expressed deep concern and alarm over the ongoing combat operations in the capital Khartoum and other regions. The Secretary General of the Arab League called for an immediate ceasefire. The U.S. Embassy in Sudan called for stopping the fighting and ensuring the protection of civilians and the U.S. Ambassador in Khartoum expressed his hope that the military leaders would stop the fighting between all parties. The United Kingdom called on its citizens in Sudan to stay in their homes and the British Embassy in Khartoum said that it is closely monitoring the situation in the capital and other areas where clashes are taking place. The Russian Embassy also called for an end to the fighting which threatened to slide the country towards civil war. The Russian ambassador in Khartoum said that it is necessary to stop the fighting and start negotiations between the two parties. Many Ramadan customs are preserved by Bahrainis and Gulf nationals in general during the holy month of Ramadan. One of these customs is the Ramadan Ghabga, which promotes bonding and social communication, which remained its originality with the development of time. Ghabga is one of the Ramadan customs in which family and friends gather at the tables to exchange conversation and taste delicious food in a special meal between iftar and suhoor. Distinctive customs that have been not interrupted despite the passage of time. After the Taraweeh prayer, family and friends gather at the Ghabga tables in an atmosphere full of love to enhance the acquaintance and social cohesion in an atmosphere in which brotherhood and love prevail. The experience is still the same, taste and character. Traditional food is considered one of the most famous dishes in the Ghabga, 
With the diversity of the menu that includes food from all over the world, these tables maintain the dominance of traditional food every time. Despite its difference between the past and the present, it confirms its status every year as an important gathering that everyone is keen to attend and a continuing popular heritage in this holy month. Mecca's hotel sector is witnessing a significant resurgence with room occupancy in central areas hitting 100% during the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. This year had seen an increase in the number of Umrah pilgrims with occupancy rates returning to pre-pandemic levels. The resurgence is mainly due to facilities offered by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to pilgrims from abroad. Investors and hotel owners have been quick to take advantage by opening their facilities. Given the geographical distribution of Mecca's hotels, it was clear that the new transportation network had helped these hoteliers outside the central area to cater for a fair share of Umrah pilgrims. In addition, the increase in hotel occupancy had been helped by greater accessibility to visas and the four-day transit period inside Saudi Arabia. <coughs> The King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center launched the second phase of the voluntary medical program for open heart surgery and catheterization in the city of Mukalla in Hadramaut Governorate of Yemen. The program comes as an extension of the various voluntary medical programs implemented by the center in a number of countries to provide treatment to individuals and families with limited income. At the Nabd Al Hayat Center in Mukalla, KS Relief launched the Nabd al Saudi, a volunteer program for cardiac cath and surgery in Hadramaut, in its second phase. The program aims to conduct 4,900 various heart surgeries at the cost of more than 31 million Saudi rials. The program is considered one of the largest medical programs in Yemen for its contribution to alleviating the sufferings of thousands of patients from various governorates and promoting a culture of volunteering in addition to qualifying medical personnel and facilities to ensure the sustainability of the provision of care and medicine.